Hi, I'm Mami Deo. Before going on to my classes, I would like to give, me, to give you a brief overview of what I did in the past. So I'm a mathematician, and as you can probably easily guess, I'm from Italy. I grew up in south of Italy in a small town not too far from Naples. And then I went to the Northeast to do my bachelor and my master in mathematics at the University of Padova. And during my master, I also visited the University of Warwick in Coventry as an Erasmus student. And after my graduation, I ended up at the Ecole Polytechnique in Paris for a research visit. And then I decided to come back to UK. And I started a PhD at LSE here in London last, last October. And at LSE, I also teach undergraduate courses, calculus, linear algebra, and real analysis. In January, I joined this fantastic team at London School of Math and Programming, and I currently run math circles for pupils aged between 9 and 12 years. I wrote down some key points of my classes, but I think that it's better if I give you an example of a class, or how a typical class looks like. <laughs> so we usually start with a very easy problem, so that each pupil can get into the topic. So in this case, this is a very famous problem. You have a four times four grid, and you want to cover it using dominoes. And when I say cover, I mean each cell in the grid must be covered by a domino, and no two dominoes can, can overlap. And now this is very easy. In less than one minute, every child can give me a solution. This is a solution. But now let's slightly modify the question. So I still have a 4 times 4 grid, but this time I remove two opposite corpus. And the question is the same, cover it using dominoes. And now what usually happens is that pupils start trying to cover the grid. And at some point everyone says, oh it's impossible. And indeed it is impossible. But we are not happy with that with this answer, because we want some kind of explanation. So usually my next question is, okay, why it's impossible? Can you convince me that actually a solution does not exist? And somehow the usual answer I get is, oh, okay, I tried too many times, and it never worked out, so it should be impossible. But of course this is not correct, because I can try hundreds of times, and then probably if I try another one, another time, I don't answer. So we need a different justification. So I ask them, okay, how can we explain that the problem is indeed impossible? And at some point, with the right hints, they come out with this kind of reasoning. Okay, I should cover the orange cell in the picture. And basically, I only have two possibilities. I can use a an horizontal domino or a vertical one. Let's look to this case. Well, if I use this horizontal domino, then I have some forced cells. For example, if I want to cover this one, then I should use, I must use, a vertical domino. And if I repeat this reasoning, at some point, I end up with a case in which I cannot finish my, my covering. So this case doesn't work. And with a similar reasoning, one can show that also the other case doesn't work. At some point, I get a picture in which I cannot complete my covering. So now, at this point, I can say, well, the problem has no solution. And notice how the two approaches are different. So in the first approach, I randomly try, and I hope to get the answer at some point. In the second approach, I systematically go through every single possibility. I understand that no matter how I start my covering, I will never end. So the problem has no solution. 
And I think this is just amazing at this age for at least two reasons. First of all, students understand or maybe discover that problems in math might have no solutions or more than one solution. And this is something very surprising for, for them because usually problem, problems in homework or so problems in exams have always just one single and unique correct solution. But this is not always true in math. And second reason, this is really a gentle approach to proof. They learn why giving a proof is important, or at least if they are too young for a proof, at least try to give a convincing argument. And this is somehow useful not only in math, but I would say in life. If one makes a sentence, one should also be able to support the sentence. And one should also be able to convince other people that the sentence is actually correct. And I think this is just amazing, but we do really love to challenge our students. So the class does not end with this <coughs> exercise, but I propose also this other exercise. Same question again, but this time the grid is 8 times 8. And again, I remove two opposite corners. And the question is always the same. Find the cover of this, of this irregular grid. And again, students try, and again, they all realize that it is impossible. But this time, they know that I want some kind of argument. But unfortunately, the same approach as before doesn't work. Because here the grid is too big, and there are too many possibilities. So going to any possible, any possibility is not doable in practice. And what we do is leading students to this kind of argument that George already mentioned before. Imagine to color the grid using a chessboard pattern. That means black and white cells alternating each other. Now, when I put a domino, vertical one or horizontal one, doesn't matter. I always cover one black cell and one white cell. So if a covering is possible, I must have the same numbers of black and, and white cells. But it turns out that there are 30 black cells and 32 white cells, and therefore the problem has no solution. And again, notice the difference between the second and the third approach. They still are at proof, but the second approach only works in small cases, because one has really to analyze any single possibility, while this approach is abstract and much more general. And now, if I ask the same question with a grid of size 2018 times 2018, every pupils will know that such a, such a covering is not possible, and everyone will be able to give me a proof of that. And yeah, I find this idea of let students approaching proof <coughs> very, very useful. Also because in standard education, proofs are really only introduced at high level education, so I would say in first year of university. But I find it really helpful and I, I really believe that this, it is possible to do proofs at this age. And that's basically all I wanted to say.